Hi everyone, welcome to Mount Ridge Homestead. My name is Colleen. First of all, I'm, it's getting really, really hard for me to film in the kitchen for you not all to see the mess, the construction and everything. We are getting close to finishing it. We're doing most of it ourselves. There was lots and lots of plumbing work and problems that came up. That was one of the main reasons why we had to do this other than the decor, but the kitchen was functional. It was fine. It was just very dated. And when, you know, the more you get into doing things, surprises come up. So Frank is doing most of it himself. And then this summer, you know, you're busy on the homestead. I had more health problems than normal this summer so he's literally been pulling the weight of both of us on the homestead for the past three four months i may look always happy and healthy to you here and that's what i want to be to you but it's not always the case so when i'm filming in the kitchen i try my absolute best for you to only ever see the bowl the pot just me you see the living room and it's getting really really hard for example I want to show you right now that I'm making some chicken broth and the only angle I can do this at right now is here because I've got other things going on in other places and it's real embarrassing but it's getting more and more frustrating so I'm just going to have to suck it up sometimes and you guys are just going to have to see what we're living with right now and hopefully it won't be for much longer that the big work will be done and then the fun stuff of getting all the new cabinets and countertops and all of that will be coming shortly. So in the meantime, I feel like we're camping, but we manage, everything's functional and I look at the big picture and there's way worse things in the world that are much worse. Example, Frank just had the TV on while he was having lunch and we saw those horrible, horrific fires in Hawaii. And if I have to live in a construction of a kitchen for a little bit longer, I am more than happy to do it because people have it so much worse. So if you can forgive the mess behind me, I'm happy to continue giving you some videos. So in the meantime, I really need some freezer space downstairs in my freezers. I've been freezing a lot of peppers. We froze our broccoli and stuff like that. And I knew I had downstairs a lot of chicken carcasses. I've been freezing like my onion peels, celery leaves, carrots and stuff like that and normally this would be a canning project I would do in the winter because it's I'm canning already so many things for the summer but I need the freezer space so the roaster has to come up soon if my tomatoes ever turn red so I figured today's a good day it's not nice weather outside I kind of got the kitchen a mess to do the three bean salad anyway. So I went shopping in my freezers downstairs and I pulled out everything I need to make the broth. And that's what I'm going to do. I don't going to can it today. I usually let my broth sit for at least minimum 24 hours, usually 48. And then I'll can it after that. So I'm just going to pull everything out of the bags. Most of it's frozen. I just brought it upstairs. I'll add some water. The only thing other than what I'm going to put in from the freezer is I'll probably add a few peppercorns and bay leaves. I'll add some vinegar because it's supposed to bring out the marrow, the nutrition from the bones better. And that's it. So pardon the mess, but this is my life. <laughs> So I had one carcass in the fridge and this one I even froze with some vegetables in it. 
I don't often have chicken with the bones on because we get most of our chicken without the like boneless so I save them up see I have onion carrot uh, probably some spinach leaves and I have something else in the freezer up here. Uh, celery leaves, I think. Just That took up a lot of freezer space. And I think I have one more thing in my freezer up here. Hold on. Perfect amount. Add a bit of vinegar. Just a splash. Put the lid on. Turn it up. This is a canning project or a kitchen project that I think is absolutely the easiest and healthiest thing that you can do. It literally costs me nothing to do it. It's all scraps from the kitchen that are so nutritious and it's going to sit here on the counter cooking all by itself. I'm not even going to stir it. I'm not going to touch it. And then in a day or so, I'll can it up. And not only do I use it for recipes, um, just last December, Frank and I thought we were the two of the luckiest people that all through COVID that we never caught it. And we got it right before Christmas, the both of us. And we both drank bone broth so much through all of it. I'm a firm believer in that. So I use it a lot for cooking, but I like to have it on hand for other things. I actually gave some away to other people when I knew they had it as well. So this is a multi-purpose thing that doesn't cost me a cent except a few pennies for canning jar lids. And I would do it over and over and over again. I just have to make sure I always have chicken carcasses around. So I'm gonna let that go. And I have other things going in the kitchen. I have a big mess to clean up. And if you don't mind the mess, I'll just keep on giving you some videos because I sure do like having you alone. So I'll see you in a bit. I thought I'd give you a peek at the chicken broth stock. It's been just over 24 hours. And I haven't stirred it. I just leave it like that. So I'm going to turn it down now. I got it up to like a bit of a boil. It's been simmering. So now I'm going to turn it on really low. And I probably won't get it to it today. So I'm just going to let it go probably overnight. And then I'll strain it all tomorrow and can it up. But it looks nice and dark. It's hard to tell because of the black pot. But it smells wonderful. And it's going to be awesome. So that's a peek at that. And we'll can it up soon. I'm back. It's two days later. And the broth looks absolutely amazing. I've had it on really low for two days. I thought I was going to do it yesterday. Things got really busy, so I just kept it on really low. I'm going to bring you in close and show you what it looks like. I haven't stirred it or anything. It's going to look darker because of the pot being black, but it, it really is a nice uh, color, consistency, everything. And then I'm going to strain out all the bones and vegetables. Then I'm going to put it through cheesecloth and a strainer and take out all the little sediment. So I'll bring you in close to see what it looks like before I disturb it. And then I'm going to put it into jars. Here it is. I heard somewhere that you're not supposed to stir it 
so I didn't. I just left it the way it is. The water level's gone down a bit. So when I take everything out and I find it too low, I may add a touch if I find it a really thick froth. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it just the way it is. So I'm going to get everything set up and I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm just going to take out as much of the big stuff as I can. And I hope you can't hear the dishwasher because I'm running the jars through so they'll be clean and hot. And that's it. So I hope everything fits in this bowl, otherwise I'll have to go get another one. But And this is one of my absolute favorite things to make and can. This isn't the prettiest process of the job, but. And when I put it through like the strainer and the cheesecloth, I do that for personal preference. Um, Putting it through the strainer, I think, is almost essential, or you will still get glumps of things. But I like to put it through the cheesecloth as well, because, like I said earlier, I don't just use it for cooking. I'll use it as for, like, medicinal things, like to drink as a broth when we're sick and stuff. And I find it more palatable or pleasant in my mouth if you don't get little bits and pieces and especially if I'm giving it to others for the same reason I think it's much nicer if they don't have little bits of chicken or whatever now I probably will after canning have a bit of like a a grease or fat rim at the top because some of this chicken did have a bit of skin on it but it's a good fat and that'll settle at the top and when it's warmed up it'll just work its way into the broth but it's a good fat to have so that part I'm not worried about and it adds to the flavor of the broth I might need a bigger bowl oh and this is so heavy it didn't seem as much when I put it in there I thought all this was supposed to shrink. And I never remember from time to time when I make it how many pints I'm going to end up with. I always do it in pints. I was actually thinking of doing some of it in jelly jars, but I didn't get any of them ready. So I guess I'll do that next time because I find a lot of recipes just call for like one cup of broth and then I'm stuck with like the other cup of broth out of a pint and then I have to try and find something to do with it or just drink it or sometimes it just goes to the chickens so I was thinking the other day I should use some in jelly jars but I didn't think of that in advance and I only got the pints prepared and that's what it's going to be today And I do have uh, beef bones in my freezer that I have to get to as well. Because when we had the cow butchered, we had the option to have um, the bones. And I didn't take them all because, my gosh, I'd need probably a whole other freezer just for the bones. But I did take quite a few. And I do have beef broth in the pantry. But... I'll need to get those bones out of the freezer as well. And lately we've been, a few recipes we've been making, we've been going through the beef broth. All right, I think we've pretty well gotten all the bigger pieces. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and then I'm gonna set up to like pour it through the mesh and everything and get a nice clear liquid. There, I got my little system all set up. 
I have a fine mesh strainer that I use and I put cheesecloth in as well because that seems to catch even more. I probably go a little bit overboard but this is how I like it and I dampen the cheesecloth and this guy is only here because I have nothing to hold this guy. I have a bigger one of this but you know in a kitchen reno you can't find everything so he's just going to sit here and then I'm just going to take my measuring cup and pour it through. I can already see like a, I've had it turned off for, I don't know, about an hour or so. And I can already see like um, the, the bit of fat forming on the top. I did pretty good getting all this stuff out because it's not collecting so much. I'll bring you in close so you can see. Not that I'm sure you haven't seen it before, but it's going to be beautiful. There, yeah, we're up close and personal now. Yes, I'm going to get quite a bit. I don't think I'm going to add any water to it at all. And I know this is going to hit the bottom of this real soon, so I have another pot standing by. All right, I'm going to finish straining this, and then we'll get all the jars set up. Alrighty, I just took the jars right out of the dishwasher so they're nice and hot still and I'm going to try something different. I'm living on the wild side. I'm usually a ladler but I'm going to just do the same thing I did with, um, oh I need my funnel. See I always forget something. Ay, that's in the dishwasher too. I'll never not forget something. So I'm going for a one inch head space. Yeah, I knew this would be it's a bit spilly. That's why I'm a ladler. I knew these things never pour properly. No, I might go back to the ladle, but this is faster. So before when I said it's like getting hard for me, harder for me to like film in the kitchen or video in the kitchen. It's not because it's hard for me. It's like this time of year when there's so many things going on in the kitchen that like you can't see what's all over here. I have the water bath canner. I have jars of stuff that I canned yesterday. Over here I have another canner going. I have produce on the floor, so I can't always like just focus the camera on one thing. I have too many things going on right now. So then if I have to show a wider picture, then you, you have to see all the yuck. So, and then the worst part of this is this will forever live on YouTube. Even when I have my nice kitchen, this will always be there. Oh, I can't help that. But like I said, there's way, way worse things in the world. Here I am standing in my kitchen doing something I love to do making the healthiest broth for me, my family, and whoever else needs it. And I have nothing to complain about making a bit of a mess, but... So I'm not going to show you like the whole 
canning process of this. This wasn't really the point of the video. This was more like just a byproduct of it. I can't just stand here and talk to you and bore you like that. I have to be doing something. So I'm going to fill these. I have more jars to come. I think I'll end up, this is eight, 16. I think I'm going to end up with like a good 20, 22 jars because this is a short pot and it was full. This is a bigger pot and it's three quarters full. So, and I, I didn't add any more uh, liquid to the pot. I knew I had plenty there. So I'm going to fill all these, get them in the canner. And the other ones I'll just do like, um, I don't want to confuse anybody that's new to canning, but like I'll let other things come to room temperature. And then when these are done, I'll let my canner come to room temperature and do them that way. This is hot. My canner's hot right now. This batch will all be done hot. The next ones will all be done at room temperature. So I'm going to write my, write, wipe my lids. I don't have to be bubble. It's all liquids. And I am taking care because there, see, I don't know if you can see, but there is like a wee bit of fat coming to the top there. So, but like I said, this really isn't a canning video. It was just something for me to do while I talk to you. So, and just FYI, my ball book says one inch ahead space and pints are for 20 minutes, quarts are for 25. At my altitude, it's 20 minutes. Putting on clean lids. They were just soaking in warm water. They're clean. And then I just keep them in water. I find they're easier to grab that way too. There, I've never done the 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 poor thing from the measuring cup. It went fast, but I definitely spilt more. And fingertip tight. So, like I said, probably for the third time. Ooh, that one didn't feel good. Sometimes you just know, you get a feeling. And I'm going to clean up another mess, or part of the mess, while I can anyway. And then Frank's going to babysit the canner for me. Because I'm going to go take a nice, cool bath. I am so hot. We have central air. But with everything, all the steam, everything's hot, and I always run hot anyway. I'm tired, and I'm going to go have a nice, cool, relaxing bath, get in my jammies early, and then he'll watch the canner for me, and then I'll have the next load ready to do at room temperature after that. But I will bring you back just to show you what the jars look like at the end and you can see how pretty they look because they always look pretty so i'm gonna say goodbye at this point and then i'll show you how everything looks at the end because after my bath i don't think i'll be able to stand much longer i'm gonna be jellyfish like just total relaxing so thank you so much as always for hanging out with me for listening to me and this was just a little byproduct but that's how I make my broth I like it long and slow and I end up with a fabulous product in the end so until we're together again take care